Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. You may notice I'm wearing my brand new Peanuts t-shirts that has Snoopy laying around on top of the roof of his doghouse and it says, I'd rather be sleeping. <laughs> yeah, he'd rather be. Especially on Mondays. <laughs> I got this at Big Lots for only a lot less than I expected and it fits perfectly for me. But, as we get around with it, since October is the month of Halloween, and it's already, I'm going to review the most recent horror film. It's pretty intense, totally bonkers, and rather peculiar. Um, not exactly as partially scary as you think, but it's actually pretty close, because it does have some jump scares too. It's called Malignant. It's the latest film from writer-director James Wan, who gave us uh, films like Saul, as well as The Conjuring and Insidious films. It's a story about one woman who begins to uh, experience her visions of grisly murders that's happening around by this mysterious killer who might as well have been a figure of her imagination. But it turns out all of this is for real. And I saw the movie on HBO Max on Saturday, uh, seeing that it's only available for a couple days until it's going to be taken off. Yeah, because it just came out on September 10th, so it's only 31 days for HBO Max. Well, for a theatrical release, it'll just keep on going until it hits uh, home video. You know, digital and and later 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD. Anyway, it stars uh, Annabelle Wallace, um, who you may remember her from the movie Annabelle. That's one of the spin-offs from Conjuring. With uh, McKenna Grace, uh, Maddie Hayson, George Young, uh, Mashola Brianna White, Jean Louisa Kelly, you may remember her from Uncle Buck, and she came a long way from that movie. And I know she's done a lot of great stuff too, and, and she even had that TV show uh, with uh, Michael Malley called uh, Yes Dear, which was on CBS. Uh, Madison Wolf, uh, Susanna Thompson, Jake Abel, Jacqueline uh, McKenzie. Christian Clemenson, Amira Obella, I don't know if I said it right, Ingrid Basu, Paula Marshall, and Zoe Bell, yes, the stunt woman who's been in films uh, like uh, Death Proof, which is uh, a Tarantino film. And I know she's done a lot of stunt work for, for uh, Xena, Warrior Princess. Among many others. Yeah, so you'll remember her. Ray Chase, um, who's a voice actor, done for several anime shows and video games, among others. Annie Bean and Patricia Velasquez. Sorry. Yeah, it's written by James Wan, along with Ingrid Basu and Akila Cooper, and is directed by James Wan. The movie began set in the Washington State area where we spotted a local beach that has a cliff of a, a gothic-like castle which turns out to be a mental institution called Simonian Research Hospital set in 1993 where Dr. Florence Weaver played by Jacqueline McKinsey along with her colleagues Victor Fields and John Gregory both played by Christian Clemenson and Emil Abuelela we're about to treat this one psychiatric patient named Gabriel, who is voiced by Ray Chase, but a physical performer by Marina Mazeppa. Anyway, it turns out that Gabriel has special powers. He can actually control electricity. He can even become invisible at times, and even broadcast his entire thoughts through his voice of all the speakers around, including the radio. Yeah, so you can even uh, flicker around the lights and snaps and breaks, anything. 
So one night, Gabriel turns completely psychotic and violent, winds up killing all the staff members around the hospital, and then they're ready to destroy him by you know, cutting the cancer yeah, through the malignant disease. Anyway, 20 years later, set in Seattle, we meet a pregnant woman named Madison Lake, played by Annabelle Wallace, who returns home to her abusive husband, Derek Mitchell, played by Jacob Bell, after her pregnancy caused her to feel particularly ill at work, which leads to their arguments, you know, and Derek eventually vertically, physically um, abused her by slamming her directly into the wall, causing her head to bleed. He apologized for what he did and decided to go downstairs to grab some ice to heal her. But she locked the door just as soon as he arrived and was ready to apologize. The following night, he decided to stay and he decided to sleep on the couch. He woke up and he began to find out that an intruder had came by in the house. Um, this intruder actually was about to make a late night snack. And I know it turns out that it really is Gabriel. Just turning on the blender and you know trying to grab all the food from the refrigerator and then later went straight into the TV, just channel surfing until Derek was ready to be attacked by him by turning him into a pretzel. And Madison eventually woke up thinking that she had a nightmare, but it turns out to be real for sure. She had a vision of Derek being attacked by Gabriel and was ready to attack her just as soon as she woke up you know while her head was still bleeding it, it could have healed a long time ago but it had a blood stain on the pillow so during at four o'clock in the morning we meet detectives um, Keoa Shaw and his partner Regina Moss both played by George Young Michelle Brianna White uh, they brought in with um, a forensic expert because they just found some clues and, and all this other stuff, especially what they did to Derek, well, the intruder. Uh, so they had took him to the hospital, he's already dead, and they had to take Madison directly to the hospital as well. When she woke up the next morning, she was being informed by her sister, Sydney, who was played by Maddie Hayson, that... Her unborn child uh, did not make it um, during the attack, so she lost her baby. And now she had to be questioned by uh, Shaw and Moss about what just happened and how she isn't quite herself because of already feeling very de disappointed and depressed that she lost her child. So she returned home and began to explain to. Sydney that she was actually adopted at eight years old and she already did explain about what what Derek did to him as and not to mention she was about to lock the doors you know expecting that the killer is going to arrive again and it's just to be safe so then Gabriel eventually kidnaps a woman that's running the Seattle underground tour and Madison eventually had another vision, which this time the killer just murdered Dr. Weaver, who's already older now. And during their investigation, Shaw and Moss had discovered the photo of Madison when she was very young, as a child, it was directly through Weaver's house. They even spotted the weapon that Gabriel had stabbed her with. Yeah, it was a trophy. And... We also learned that we were actually specialized in child reconstructive surgery for any others. So then Madison and her sister approached the police just to explain about what was happening until she started getting all these other visions about what's happening to all of Weaver's uh, colleagues. And yes, uh, Victor Fields and John Gregory were all killed. Um, maliciously, gruesomely, and gorily. <laughs> uh, that's not a word, sorry. 
and it was totally brutal too. Um, yeah, one was killed um, at the Silver City uh, Hotel. This is the same place where they shot the movie Highlander, and while the other one had died uh, in his home, and which this is a, at this point on the scene where where Shaw was ready to chase after him throughout the entire tunnels. He was just going around, hiding around, and, and attacking him, you know, throwing all this other stuff around at him. Yeah, it, it was another chase scene going around. Um, but um, Madison, on the other hand, just received a phone call from Gabriel, and this is where it explains who she really is. And it turns out that she, they... Gabriel just claims that she's actually, basically, Emily, who's one of the patients. But it's, even though Madison isn't exactly what she's known for, because that's what leads to all the secrets behind this. When after she was adopted, she had to go straight to her adopted parents um, that Sid, that uh, Madison had to took Sydney to, and begin to explain about Gabriel. That if this was her a figure of her imagination, so her adopted mother decided to watch all the videos, you know, along with her and, and Sydney, about what she remembered as a child, how he, she began to hear Gabriel, like this was her imaginary friend, but actually he was here the whole time. And this is where we begin to see what was going on with Madison because apparently no one's going to believe her and her story, but she's trying to do her best to protect her adopted parents so they won't get killed. And that's the case. So, of course, he, she had been sent over there, but she actually tried to, you know, be able to not think about her, uh, not think about Gabriel anymore. And just actually spend more time with her parents and her sister, so nothing will happen for better or worse. And it leads to a lot of mysteries that had to be solved too, because that's where the film starts to go completely bonkers, and everything started to go really crazy after that. Because at that point on, this is when we begin to find out her secret that she isn't exactly what who she is. Sydney had to go all the way directly to the Samanian Research Hospital to find some more clues. And this is where she found how abandoned this place was. Yeah, it's starting to become more haunted than ever. Tries to find some files that's being sent around and started to continue to watch some more tapes directly at uh, Madison's adopted mother's house. And then we begin to see the final truth of of all the two uh, patients. And yes, it turns out that one of them happens to be Madison's biological mother. And the other one had to been pretty much her, or perhaps that was the case. And we begin to see that behind them, this is a shocker. There was there was actually a twin that was behind her backs. It was a it was like a creature that was just that got stuck in there and they're trying to destroy it. So it's like a, a tumor that just grew and grew and starts to affect and and all the creature starts to come right out. It almost becomes like an alter ego of themselves pops out and then starts to control them like like they were puppets and that's where it goes to a violent spree especially in the scene where you know after the investigation that Madison was trying to explain to them because they won't listen they already did found the woman that's already been up on the attic you know, all tied up and was ready to get out of there thinking that Madison did this but she didn't but she's trying to explain who Gabriel is, and that's when she's been sent to the jail cell along with all the other cellmates, 
all women. And and apparently we did spot it once so made with the mullets and yeah, she's played by Zoe Bell. Um named Scorpion. <laughs> and that's when after being brutally attacked by them, that's when she suddenly goes completely insane and now she begins to control the the puppet of of this uh, creature that's coming directly straight to the back of her head it grew it grew and now it's ready to attack um, all the cellmates and then later attack all the cops around at the police station which then Shaw and, and Moss had just came by ready to stop them and they're also trying to save Madison but Madison escapes of course and now um, while in the hospital Sydney had came by you know trying to find where where she's at you know Madison's biological mother who's already in the hospital recovering already uh, in a coma Gabriel just came by and was ready to kill her and was ready to kill pretty much everyone until Madison finally came by and and stopped him yes and tries to save Sydney and his mom and all and that's how the film ends sorry for the dead giveaway of the story but I try to make this review more apparent here so I should have mentioned the spoiler alert I'm sorry <laughs> Hey, I make mistakes. But this is one trippy, peculiarly bonkers of a recent horror film that James Wan had ever made. It's pretty much in the tradition of all these B-horror films uh, from the past. Even the ones from the 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s. Sort of in the tradition of, uh, sort of in the likes of Stephen Kane, as well as uh, David Cronenberg, Dario Argento, John Carpenter, um, even Stephen Kane, for that matter. It has that blend that really works with several twists and turns that you'll never get bored of. Yeah, it really works. Yes, it does have those apparent jump scares, but for the most part, it does have some incredible CGI with... Um, mixed with uh, practical physically how it's done you know you have a performer who can actually do all these acrobatic moves when trying to control this particular uh, killer who's the patient as we know it uh, Gabriel and this Gabriel unfortunately does have his own sinister side so of course like all these killers around they always have to act so sinister and crazy that He's just going to come across to kill once again and starts to harm this victim who's starting to experience all these visions that are about to happen and how it's taking place. And for this one woman trying to fight against and trying to explain, hoping that he won't be uh, getting into bigger trouble. And if that's the case, you know, she's going to try to find a way to stop him. And yeah... Uh, Annabella Wallace did a great job portraying that role. It's a better role than she did in in Annabelle, but that's the case. And the rest of the cast, um, even Jean uh, Louise uh, Kelly, I mean, I was surprised to see her in this, are great. Um, it definitely goes in in this particular direction. It even has that eerie score that was done by Joseph Bashara creates sort of like an Italian style like a gentle type where it creates the the eeriness the the chilling the the one of those one of those kind of scores that are where it makes your skin crawl within minutes and it get it really gets to you it's very loud orchestrated but well done yeah and there's a lot of graphic violence all of which are very gory, brutal, and wow, and it's just totally bad shit crazy as it follows, but it works. 
been a long time since I've seen movies like this. So it does kind of remind me a bit like The Dark Half, you know, where Timothy Halton, um, Timothy Hutton's character who plays a writer who just wrote several of those graphic novels but eventually had a tumor that creates an alter ego of himself as a doppelganger, goes on a killing spree. And I guess it's a bit like uh, John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness with Sam Neill who, who begins to see like visions uh, from this H.P. Um, Lovecraft type of author who writes all these novels and eventually he begins to see all this that's happening hoping it was either real or not so very similar in tone and yes I mean this is where they all go insane very well done how they did it so either way um, if you must check this film for yourself it's not for everybody I can understand why there are people out there who don't like it and you know, they have a diverse reaction to it but there are people out there who who will enjoy it for all it's worth I mean who cares if it's just another standard horror film that we often get that might either be good or bad but as long as it's done well because I, I would rather watch something like this than any of this annoying you know, jump scare galore. I mean, in spite of the fact that this does have jump scares, but not to mention all these unlikable people that we often see in these horror films. You know, all these found footage uh, POV kinds. I mean, I'm getting tired of that. Or are any of these horror remakes that turn out to be terrible? That sort of thing. I mean, this is what we really need nowadays. But it's been a while. So anyway. Check this out. Um, it's only going to be on for just a few days because it's going to be taken off uh, on October 10th on HBO Max. But otherwise, you can just go see it in theaters before it hits home video. And hopefully, you'll be able to enjoy it. Or if you don't, then that's fine. So, anyway, that's Malignant, and I give the movie four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.